there folks, this is Jake from Tier 3 Tactical. Today we're going to be talking about a little article I wrote called The Best 556 Round for Home Defense, CQB. We're going to be diving into some of the research. And this is one of the areas that a lot of folks have some pretty strong opinions out. And unfortunately, not a lot of folks actually delve into the science that really matters. You might see people talk about ballistics gel tests or foot pounds of energy. But unfortunately, that is not the full story. So let's get into it. You gotta keep in mind that any round we talk about today is going to be, um, we're gonna be talking about relatively small differences in performance, and a few percent at, at best. Um, shot placement is always gonna trump having some fancy new bullet that the manufacturer swears will do everything. Uh, there's no such round that's gonna perform well in all situations, as we'll see further down. But to uh, really understand what we need to um, talk about in terms of ballistics, we needed to realize that there are, in fact, three different areas of ballistics that people study. Most of the time when you hear that term, you just think of bullet and flight. Um, and that's not exactly accurate. There's three different types. There's internal ballistics. That's the study of the round from the time that the primer struck to when it leaves the barrel. For our, for our purposes today, that's not a huge deal. It's more of a concern to ammunition and um, firearms manufacturers so you don't blow your gun, gun up. The next is going to be external ballistics. Now, this is going to be of interest to us. This is one where Hollywood has kind of fooled us here. A lot of times you see that slow-mo shot of a bullet spinning perfectly in flight. That's not exactly wrong, but it's not exactly right either. Um, bullets don't fly like that, especially as they leave uh, the barrel. As you'll see further down, the 5.56 round actually yaws or spins in an imperfect spiral. Uh, quite a lot in the first 50 meters of its of its travel and then eventually does get to that perfect spiral so as we'll see later that yaw uh, for the round is going to be one of the key considerations for selecting a good um, a good um, 556 bullet for your application lastly we're talking about terminal ballistics this is the study of the bullet and their effects on the target today that's going to be a human person and that uh, introduces a lot of difficulty for us as you might imagine a 140 pound person and a 240 pound person are going to have much different effects if they get hit by the same round. Likewise, there's different structures in your body that have different densities, bones, organs, muscle, tendons, skin, things like that. Um, there's no there's no average kind of um, area that, that, that can be hit with, your, with a bullet and so you know exactly where it's going to happen. Depending on what it hits, it might do something completely different. So with all these factors in mind, that's what we're going to use to look at the terminal performance in bullets. And when you know it, the Army actually did uh, some research on this exact um, area, and they examined what, what, um, which are the best 5.56 bullets for their use. In 2008, the Army was receiving a lot of reports from soldiers saying that their 5.56 rounds were, were passing through enemy combatants. And they took it upon themselves to do some research examining the lethality of the 5.56 round. And they compared their um, 62 grain green tip round and a few of their other uh, standard uh, rounds that they buy to anything that was commercially available. And I mean everything. Everything from a 40 grain copper round to a 100 grain round, which I didn't even know was a thing. So they did a full comparison ballistic gel test and things like that. But along the way, they noticed that they were getting much different results from other, um, other entities that also did this kind of testing. And they realized that was being caused by yaw. So as we said before, yaw is the angle uh, where the bullet strikes what, uh, in this case, ballistic gel, which is a you know is a uh, common dense uh, medium to test this. It's at a it's at a um, set calibrated density, and it's roughly equivalent to the average density of human body. But it's basically just a a way to to test bullets. And so, as we said before, the yaw is the angle of the bullet. So if you imagine a line going through the front, the tip of the bullet to the rear, a high yaw angle would, would mean that that's not parallel to the ground. A, a zero degree yaw angle or low yaw angle would be nearly nearly parallel to the ground and inner straight, like you would see in those kind of Hollywood um, shots. So they noticed that a lot of bullets were actually entering uh, into the ballistics gelatin at a high yaw angle or no yaw angle, and this produced drastically different results. Some would get great penetration and go all the way through. Some would uh, enter at a high yaw angle and then immediately break apart. Some of you might be wondering, well, okay, what are the results? Well, surprise, surprise, the Army found out that there really wasn't hardly any difference in 
any round whatsoever. They even compared all the 556 five, rounds that they currently issue um, to the commercially available ones. They also compare that to the um, 762 ball round that they, they normally issue. And the ball round actually, the 762 round actually did worse than the 556 five, round. Um, so that just kind of goes to show you that stopping power and foot pounds of energy and gel tests are not enough to ensure that a round uh, does its job. The Army found in this 2008 study that there really were no commercially uh, available rounds that did any better than what they were already issuing. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And you can check out that chart. I'll throw that up there so you can see the chart and see what it looks like. So it's not just energy. It's not just gelatin that matters. So we got to look at really more specifically the yaw. And I'll throw a chart up here in a second that talks about um, what the yaw looks like for a 5.56 five, round. The first 50 meters has quite a, a quite a aggressive yaw rate and then eventually does kind of spiral out into that perfect Hollywood spiral. Um, and so that really does affect um, the lethality of the round. And the most important thing is because you can't guarantee that any specific shot will strike a target with a certain yaw rate, the Army found that the only way of increasing lethality is actually to shoot more than once. So they compared a, um, two uh, controlled pairs, which is two shots with two sight pictures, compared to a single shot in terms of lethality. They found that, obviously, as you might imagine, two was much better. But it wasn't better because you shot them twice. It was better because um, you had a better chance of getting a bullet strike with a higher yaw rate, which, of course, does more damage to a human uh, body. So that's it, right, guys? We need a 5.56 five, round with a, a high yaw rate and just get that green tip 62 grain army bullet. Well, it's not, not quite as easy as that. Remember, the army's job is to fight against other armies um, or insurgents or whatever, and oftentimes these folks are wearing um, bulletproof vests or at least a lot of equipment, so they need something that's going to defeat a barrier. So we need to start talking about the specifics of round design for what you might be using. So if you're in home defense, you probably don't want a round that's going to blow through 10 walls. If you're um, part of a tactical unit that does a lot of vehicle interdictions, you probably need something that will you know, work through um, sheet metal and um, automotive glass. So let's look at an interesting uh, article from Active Response Training. Um, very, very detailed research where they shot through ballistic gel with a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different rounds and they also put things like cloth in front of it, automotive glass, um, uh, wood, you name it. And the only real problem with this uh, article is they couldn't really capture yaw data. That is pretty hard to capture and um, even the army wasn't capturing it for a long while so I don't really blame them for that. But they kind of uh, tested a lot of great high quality rounds and I've distilled them into three kind of recommendations depending on what your needs are. So if you're shooting through glass barriers, you know, if you're doing vehicle interdictions, your police or tactical unit, um, they found that the Hornady 55 grain GMX, it's linked in the article below, it actually did a really good job uh, maintaining its mass and penetrating deep enough into that ballistics gel. The next, with the least penetration, so this is probably going to be your go-to round for home defense because you don't want something that's going to penetrate through walls or things like that, is the Hornady Tap Urban. Uh, they found that that uh, almost completely breaks apart upon hitting a wall or any kind of barrier. In this case, I think it was a glass. So it basically pulverizes the, uh, the round. And last, general purpose ammo that has some penetration capability as well as um, not too much through a huge number of bears. Um, the Federal Tactical 62 grain to LE round, that's a very popular one. That's a, a solid choice for kind of a you know, your Leatherman rounds, all purpose, but not specialized for any one application. So uh, if you're doing home defense, that the TAP Urban is probably a good a go to general purpose, the federal tactical. And if you're shooting through certain barriers, maybe go with that Hornady 55 grain GMX. Now, if you go to the article, I've included the actual ballistic testing results from Hornady um, for those rounds. So go check those out. They're pretty interesting. You can see exactly um how well they did against certain barriers, wood, metal, glass, things like that. So check out that article. Um, there's a lot of links in there that's going to it's going to help out, um, and that should put you on the right track to some some decent self defense and CQB rounds. If you like this article, give it a thumbs up, and then please subscribe. And you know what? If you wouldn't mind, share it with somebody who you think might also enjoy it. I'm Jake from Tier Three Tactical. Thanks.